Hey, what's happening, guys? Dan Dyro here with another Options to Play video update. Uh, so, wrapped up a busy week. Um, got some good action on Friday. Got some big movers, some of the names that we were looking at. It's always a fantastic way um, to head into the weekend. Gives us some momentum into the coming week. Uh, so, another really, really packed five-day stretch. Uh, a ton of big movers yes maybe we don't have like the massive market cap names but we have names that tend to move massively so you know that's a trade-off i'll take in my book all right so um just jump into things right here um it's gonna be another long video so um definitely try to stay with me i'm gonna try to work through these about as quick as i can all right so monday before the open um bhc uh it's going to be a busy week for biotech and, and kind of things get going early. So BHC Monday before the open, uh, pricing about $1.75. Um, so this is a three-day chart and you can see that it's had a really big run going into numbers and it's kind of at the top of kind of like a, a year and a half channel. And you're probably wondering like, you know, what's interesting about this? Well, it's more interesting when you go like that, right? So this is the, this is the stock that used to be VRX. And you can see that once again, it's at the top. It's got a head of momentum behind it, and um, you know, it's it's one of these setups where it's kind of like it's like the more times it tests it, the the better the move could potentially be if it finally gets through it. So it's priced in at dollar seventy five. Um, it does it does tend to be a pretty nice mover on earnings, and then it's right at the top of this key area. So um, felt like the options were decent price based off um, historical. And then if you get like the pent up move, they could end up being underpriced. So um, probably probably worth taking a look at maybe for like a volatility strategy. Uh, Under Armour also, back to the daily chart. So this is also Monday before the open. Um, about 240 or so is what they're looking for. I'm really not sure what to make of it this quarter because it's coming off a week print back uh, at the end of July and the founder just stepped down, right? So... You know, kind of like a, a weak, weak print, founder's gone, and now it's, you know, it, it seems like, it, it seems like it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like torn between, um, you know, it's, it's like people say like, oh, maybe that's for the best that the founder steps down, but technically it doesn't look great, not coming off uh, a quarter where it's particularly strong. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, a lot of mixed signals, I feel like I did anything with it, I might look at something on the bear side, just in case numbers come in weak again, because I mean it is about four dollars off the August low, so could be some room lower there. After the close Monday, um, PI, so um, pricing in about five and a half. Those are monthly options, um, kind of like an under the radar big mover. Uh, didn't do a whole lot in July, um, but it's 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 kind of like an interesting technical setup, kind of like a tight consolidation. You can see if I go back a little bit further, what I mean. Um, so it's kind of like bumping up into like, so bumped up in the 40, it's got room underneath. So, um, this is one that, uh, might not be for everybody, but I, I feel like it, it does, it does have, um, some explosive potential. There's been some bigger moves. So, um, I feel like it, it, it kind of sets up well for, um, straddle or, or strangle even. Shake Shack also Monday after the close. Um, so they're pricing in about 825. Um, had a huge move last quarter, huge, and then in, like here, and then it went on like a crazy run after, and now it's it hasn't given back all of it, but it's given back a lot of it. Um, the the problem that I see with Shake Shack is that the options are are pretty pricey based off what it typically moves. Um, restaurant stocks aren't acting great, um, and it just seems like like momentum is all to the downside. So I, I you know, to me, it seems like a tough setup to like lay out the money. Um, especially with those options at like eight and a quarter. So I'll probably just leave it alone. Uh, Uber, big one, four and a half points is what they're expecting. Um, Lyft was decent this week, but the, the initial reaction wasn't good. Um, Uber tanked last quarter. It was here. Um, and I mean, honestly, it seems like the chart's still set up better on the bear side. Um, the problem with this one, kind of like Shake Shack, is that four and a half seems pretty pricey for Uber. Uh, so... If I, if I did anything with it, I'd have to get the risk down somehow um, or or maybe do like a directional trade. So maybe maybe even like still look at like 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 a bear scenario or, or bear strategy on this. Um, tandem. So seven points, what's priced in here. Um, MedTech name, the, the, the last two quarters have been blowouts, but the stock hasn't gone anywhere. Um, and it's just in like this kind of like tight, tight, 
like seven month consolidation. Well, it's it's had some pops and drops, but for the most part, it's been in a consolidation above sixty, right? Um, I mean, if it can break above seventy, like there could be a really huge move, or if it breaks like the low or like mid to low fifties, there could be a huge move lower. Um, but it hasn't been as consistent. But it does have potential, so I might look at like a low debit, like lotto type trade, where you know go further out of the money on either side, just in case it has like that pent up breakout or or breakdown after such like a long base up here. Um, all right, Tuesday before the open, Allergan, um, three seventy five is what they're expecting. Um, I don't I don't like to play names that are going through M and A deals. And I'm sure you've heard me mention that, um, so I'm going to avoid this one. Amarin. Dollar uh, fifty is what they're looking for. Amarin now, um, it might be a mover on earnings, but it's not going to be the big story on this thing near term. Uh, they have their um, FDA advisory committee meeting next week, so the fourteenth, uh, so the following week, the fourteenth, um, and that's going to be a huge catalyst. So, I don't know if people are really going to push this thing around prior to that. Um, but if you're interested, that advisory committee meeting on the 14th, um, they're expecting some some very 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 big move, uh, big moves off of that. So um, you could maybe look at like a, a calendar, even like like buying like the 15th and then selling this coming week. Maybe thinking that it doesn't move much, then has a huge move the week after. Um, okay, Mylan. Um, so another an, another. Uh, healthcare name here. Um, it's actually going to be a really big week for generic stocks. So you have Mylan, Endo, M and K, Teva, and all per- and Perigo. They're all 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 this coming week. Um, Mylan's priced it in two. Kind of kicks things off. So uh, I feel like it has that element of surprise to it. Um, plus, you know, it did have a pretty nice move last quarter. A pretty big pop, about four four bucks. So um, it, it's not my favorite stock, and I really haven't traded it much in the last like year two years um but if anything like i said like like the first of what should be kind of like a busy few days for generic names and it has that element of surprise so it could be worth it um i don't know i'm on the fence with it though peloton first report is a public company um the pricing in 325 um short interest is ramping big time on this thing big 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 time as a percent of float it's it's huge um stock has been hammered but it is bouncing a little bit. Um, I mean, like I, I feel like this thing's gonna be very, very, very volatile. Um, huge short interest, uh, a kind of uh, recent IPO. Um, I, I just I feel like this sets up well for a volatility strategy. Like three and a quarter. Um, you know, it's not those aren't cheap, but at the same time, I mean, there's so many things indicating this could be a big mover. Regen, um, sixteen seventy five is what's priced in here. Um, Really trying to break out of like this long kind of downtrend, um, and it it's lagged some of the big bios. It really hasn't had any major catalyst. I guess that's the, the issue. It, it's just been lagging. Hasn't had a whole lot of interest. Um, it didn't move much last quarter in earnings, but maybe this quarter is more potential because it it's been sideways. Bio's been better. Uh, you know, it, I I feel like. It, it could be set up for like a pretty big pent up breakout or breakdown and charts seems to indicate it could have like 30 points either way. It's just not really consistent. Um, so I'd have to get risk down somehow and uh, maybe something further out of the money j- just because, you know, t- it's, it's not just a consistent name uh, like it used to be around earnings. All right. Uh, after the close Tuesday, you have Devin, DVM, which is priced in a dollar fifty, and then FANG Fang, which is priced in five seventy five. And the reason why I'm talking about these is not not that either looked particularly interesting, but it's going to be another big week for EMP names. So in addition to these, there's going to be a ton of other ones. Um, uh, this past week, you had a, some of the bigger names, and this coming week, we're going to have some of like the small to mid cap names, and, and those are usually where the volatility is. So um, Devin. The, I guess of the two, a little bit more interesting, just because it's at like a really critical long-term area of support. Uh, you can see right at 20. Um, although Fang, so Devin, a little bit more interesting. Technically, Fang is a little bit more volatile typically. So, you know, I know. I guess you could look at XOP, like that's the EMP uh, ETF. Uh, could be a way to play all these reports. Match. Um, so this is also Tuesday after the close. Nine points. What's priced in this time around? Um, had a big beat and a huge pop in August. Gave it all back. 
Um, it's really been kind of lifeless for all of October, to be honest. Um, you know, it, that, that, that move in August made options this quarter very expensive, um, and it, I just don't think they leave a lot of room. Um, I, I'd be bullish bias just based off the last few quarters, but at the same time, those options are very expensive um, just based off like the average move. I mean, last, last quarter kind of skewed those higher, unfortunately. So, you know, I, I lean bullish, but it would have to be some sort of lower debit, get the risk down type of strategy. So like spreads, um, flies, something along that line. We watchers, WW, um, five and a quarter. Um, this is this seems like a really interesting setup to me because just a, a kind of like a tight bull flag after a big run. You can see it finally turned the corner last quarter, right? After just getting destroyed for a long stretch, finally turned the corner. So this this is like like a make or break print because it's finally trying to turn the corner. Um, it's got a ton of room higher, but it's also up a lot in like the last three months. Options are priced in at 525. It, it's had multiple moves this year in excess of 10. So I feel like those options look a little bit underpriced to me. Um, so I, I don't know. It seems like it sets up well for like a strangle or a straddle. Wednesday before the open, CVS. Um, big healthcare name here. Three and a quarter. What they're looking for. Um, caught this one last quarter for trigger on earnings. Uh, that was back here. Um, Oh, no, excuse me. It was back here in August. Um, and it's, it's acted pretty nice since. I mean, kind of just like stair-stepping higher. Um, it's right under the gap from February. You can see it still hasn't closed that gap. But I feel like Walgreens' lack of movement this past week on its own report kind of makes me more cautious on this. Um, I've played this in the past, but I just feel like this setup is a little bit tougher, so I think I'm going to avoid it. CYBR. Um, so kind of like Devin and Fang, um, you know, th there's actually going to be a lot of software reports this coming week. And CyberArk, you know, it's one of many. It's a little bit more interesting than some, but even then, like, I, I, I don't love the way this action is on it, it, actions playing out on these software stocks. CyberArk's priced it in 950. And I, I've, I've been avoiding um, most of the software names just because, I mean, it doesn't seem like they get rewarded for good numbers. And, the, like, the downside. Um, really, is, is, you're, not, you're not really getting paid on the downside. You're not really getting paid on the upside. Um, I've traded CyberArk in the past, and I guess what's interesting about this to me is that it's in a tight consolidation around 100, and you can see um, very clear gap underneath. And on the upside, it seems like there could be like a little bit of an air pocket to um, like the 200A and the 100A, which is up like high teens, 120 area. So it seems like there could could maybe be like you know like between like 12 and 15 points either way. Pricing in nine and a half, so a little bit more interesting, but still, I mean, I, I, these software stocks are tough. LL uh, lumber liquidators, dollar and a quarter is what's priced in. Um, inconsistent mover on earnings recently, but in the past, it's had some really huge moves. Um, options are, are priced lower, so expectations really aren't that that high for a big swing. But you know, you could say like it's done it in the past, maybe it'll do it again. So. If anything, some sort of like speculative shot to see if it has one of those like 20, 30 percent moves like it's done in the past. All right. Um, after the close Wednesday, it's going to be a, a big night. Um, so first things first, Baidu, um, 775 is what's priced in. And I'll say this. If this wasn't a China tech name, I'd say this would probably be my favorite setup of the week. Um, but because it is China tech, a little bit, a little bit less. So um, just because they, they don't they don't seem to move as cleanly as other names out there right now. Um, and that, that's really like, you know, I feel like if, if this was like a, just a normal tech stock, I would love this setup. But because it's a China tech stock, I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit more cautious on it. Still tight action. Um, and it's really at like kind of like an inflection point on the chart, trying to turn the corner still. Um, option pricing is not bad. It's got gaps, gaps um, underneath, right? That's still not filled underneath down to like the the low 90s. It obviously has a whole, whole um, massive open area to run to like the 120s if it's good because it got absolutely mauled. It hasn't really bounced. So 775 pricing not bad. Chart seems to say at least 10 points either way, but I, I don't know. I'm still like really indecisive just because China names really aren't aren't acting great still. 
Um, Dexcom, 15 and a half is what's priced in. Those are monthly options, though. Um, pretty volatile med tech name that we've actually traded a few times in the past, but it's really been stuck underneath 160, you can see here. Um, and it, it didn't move much on its last report, so it's tough to lay out the money because it, it really didn't do a whole lot last time. Um, but it does it does tend to give some kind of consistent follow through, all right. Um, so you can see here. Uh, I mean, you, you you can see that there has been in instances where it's had like pretty consistent follow through, and I, I feel like like the stock hasn't reacted to earnings much. So probably the best bet is to wait out the catalyst, wait for the options to get that implied volatility crunch, and then maybe look for like a swing trade. Um, to see if it gets like you know some consistent follow through um, either up or down. Uh, okay, Expedia seven and a half points. It was priced in uh, this quarter for Expedia, and I guess the way I look at it, it's like at some point this is gonna break 140, and when it does, you're probably gonna get a nice move. It just hasn't wanted to do that in in like about two years. You can see what I mean though. I mean above 140, you got this really obvious gap. Um, it's had some decent moves, but it hasn't had enough to really blow through this level and sustain it. Um, it it's, it's been a tough name. Um, it has moved in the past. You've had some big moves, some big reactions to earnings, but it just hasn't done that recently. It has that gap, um, and there have been some pretty severe moves lower. So, I, you know, it's one of those names where I, I think I give it the benefit of the doubt because I, I know what it's done in the past, but recently it hasn't been good so I, I might I might take a shot on it something lower debit just just in case you do get that move through 140 or if you get like the big slip up like you can see like last year it dropped like 20 points so I might do something lower debit especially because you have booking reporting later in the week um, so you're gonna get like maybe like two catalysts you get a move off the expedient number and then maybe if bookings like good or bad you're gonna move off of that fossil dollar 75 is what's priced in um, we didn't play it on earnings last quarter, but then it, it gave like a really nice swing after. Um, options aren't bad from a pricing point of view, but um, it also might be kind of better to wait it out and see what they say. Um, I mean, like the chart doesn't really look great now. Gave back a lot of that that those gains, so kind of back into like this really long downtrend. Um, so I'm more like wait and see mode on that. Puma, um, kind of like an under the radar go to biotech stock for me. When, it, when the reports earnings, I mean, it's had some just ridiculous moves. These are all earnings, 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 earnings. So you can see just some absolutely crazy big moves. Um, it's pricing in a dollar and a half, and you know it's been destroyed. So obviously, stock is at seven bucks. So the downside seven bucks versus you know if it just if it just got back to where it was in September, that'd be like five points higher. Um, so I, I don't know. I feel like the risk reward is heavily skewed to the upside. Um, dollar and a half pricing, not bad. Um, but it's probably going to have to be very, very good. And then you could maybe see like a short squeeze and some like serious upside. Qualcomm is a big, big tech report, big chip report. Um, four and a half was priced in, um, hanging pretty nicely above 80 quick little bull flag chips have been great. Um, I feel like this has been trying to turn the corner because it hasn't been able to get back up into like that 90 area to retest the, that April, May high. But chips are good. Semis are acting strong. The numbers have been pretty good this quarter. So, I mean, if, if it seems like it sets up well for like a bullish strategy. I might look at something um, targeting like a move up near like that 90 area. Roku. Th this this should be a wild one. Um, 22 and a half is what's priced in. Um tell you what i mean it, it uh, options aren't given any deals on this um uh, i mean I, I just i guess i i really struggle to see this up over 22 if it's good just based off the way the last two months have played out um but if it's a surprisingly bad uh this could be down a lot more than 22 so i i feel like the risk reward is is much more skewed to the downside but at the same time recent numbers have been very good so it could, it's kind of like fundamental bullish technical bearish so mixed signals and options are extremely expensive that that's kind of like a recipe for me to just sit it out square uh 535 is what's priced in um you know this this is one of the more interesting setups um 
tight consolidation around 60. You can see pretty pretty important level 60. Um, and it got absolutely rocked last quarter. It hasn't bounced. And um, what's interesting is that, you know, like the next big area underneath, right around 50, um, it's got room up to like the high 60s, 70s, right, just to retest that gap. So it moved It moved about um, – it, it moved about 11 to 12 last quarter. It's priced in about half of that. Um, interesting technical setup, kind of like tight consolidation for a couple months. So, I, you know, I like it for a volatility strategy. Thursday, pre-market, we have um, Ralph Lauren. So seven points is what's priced in here. Um, VFC, it's another apparel name. It's hit really hard. And um, you, Ralph Lauren is usually pretty volatile, but the, this chart setup doesn't really seem that compelling to me um, at least not as compelling as what VFC was um, PVH maybe you could look at as a, as a sympathy trade if, if anything because I, I don't I don't really like the raffler and setup um, VF Corp I thought was better it was a bigger mover if you want to maybe do something with it you could look at PVH because um, those options um, won't have like the catalyst priced into them Teva um, so like I said before Really big week for the generic names. Um, it's about a, about a dollar is what's priced in here. Um, and Mylan and Perigo are going to report before this, so I don't know if there's going to be a lot of surprise by the time Teva actually reports. So if, if this is like a trade you're interested in, you might want to do it prior to the Mylan numbers. Um, but if you do wait, then it's going to be kind of like a wait and see because if it has like a huge reaction to those, uh, I don't know if there's going to be a trade in it, but um, the chart doesn't look bad. Right, you can see it's trying to turn the corner, but options aren't aren't cheap at the same time. So, um, might have to be directional, and I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of, of movement left after Milan Perigo go. All right, uh, after the close Thursday, um, another big night here. So, Activision um, four thirty five in, in that ballpark. That's what's expected. Um, EA. Really didn't do a whole lot of earnings this week. Um, kind of like spun around. Um, kind of like an option killer, to be honest. Um, Activision, though, looks quite a bit better, in my opinion. You can see it, it's really trying to turn the corner after like a long, rounded bottom. Still has a really clear gap above. Um, big Call of Duty launch, right? I mean, that's driving some of the enthusiasm here. It's got a, 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 a new new game launching that's that's got some great numbers attached to it right now. Um, so it really seems like an interesting spot technically. Um, I mean, you got a clear gap above. I mean, you've got like a, like a tight higher base. So I'm thinking maybe like a staggered risk strangle, maybe favoring the upside because I feel like the upside scenario is a little bit more uh, interesting. But you know, you still still gotta like acknowledge that there have been some really crazy um, blowups on this thing, some like really sharp down moves on earnings. So that's what I'm saying, like a staggered risk strangle. Booking. Um, so I, I talked about Expedia um, booking Thursday after the close, about 102 points. So it's the biggest expected move from like a point perspective. Um, it's a tough stock to trade. I mean, the spreads are wide in the stock, not a lot of volume. I mean, the options are basically like the same thing, not a lot of volume, wide spreads, expensive options. So it's really not my favorite name to trade. Um, I'd say if I had to choose between this or Expedia, I, I just feel like Expedia has more potential. Um, so I think that's where my focus is going to be is on Expedia. Overstock, um, dollar sixty-five. What's priced in here? Um, just it's had so many headlines and it's had a roller coaster since it last reported. Um, it's just earnings aren't the story on this, and like I, the reason why I actually want to talk about it was just because of that. It's it's like, you know, earnings, you, when you look at it like stocks for an earnings trade, you want to make sure that earnings are the major story, right? Um, so when a stock is moving off of non-earnings related headlines, then it doesn't necessarily make it worth it to like lay the money out for a trade on earnings, right? So, I mean, this will, this will happen with like all sorts of different stuff. Um, but in this case, overstock, it's just, it's not moving based off the earnings, right? It's all about like crypto it was, then there was a CEO and it was like, so on and so forth. So it's like, it, it could have a move on the numbers, but to be honest, that hasn't really been a big catalyst in the stock for, for a while. So 
I, I'm not going to do anything with it, but you know, I, I just wanted to talk about it for that reason. Stamps.com, um, 15 and a half is what's priced in here. And it, I would, prior to like two weeks ago, I would have said, maybe that's not too bad because it has had some really big moves. There's gaps all over the chart. Um, the problem, the problem I have with the, this this quarter now is that it just had this partnership with UPS that they announced that that's why it rocketed higher just a couple weeks ago, and I, I think that that pop kind of makes it harder um, because the expectations are higher now and the downside is probably lower. So it's like it kind of changes like the the, the structure of the trade from like a risk reward perspective. Um, so I, I don't know if I want to do anything with it. it if I, if I do, maybe it would be some sort of like cheap bullish trade just to see if it gets back into like the 100 range. You can see like 100 is pretty interesting. Trade it up near 100 um, when that news was, was announced. It, I mean, it didn't get to it during the session, but I mean, 100 you can see is a really big area right here. So 15 and a half points would put it basically right at 100. So maybe I'll look at like something like cheap up, up targeting to move up into that area. Um. All right, take two. So another gaming stock here. Um, 975, it's priced in. Um, strong chart, kind of like Activision, at least compared to EA. Um, and it's actually been a more of a consistent mover on earnings than, than the other two. Um, Activision, to me, looks more explosive, but take two could also be a mover as well. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a name you've had some history with, Maybe you look at some sort of like speculative, maybe something out of the money because it, it did move like 13, uh, uh, 13 plus actually last quarter. Um, so 975, seems like the options might leave a little room. I haven't really traded this over the last few years, so I, I don't think I'm going to do anything with it. But, uh, I, you know, I do think it sets up well for move um, and options do leave a little room. So if that's something um, you have on your radar, could be uh, could be worth a look. Um Trade desk. Twenty-four and a half points is what's expected on trade desk. Now, I I like to trade this name. Um, traded it a bunch, um, you know, for swings, for earnings, for day trades, and um, I wish software stocks were acting better. I, I I don't know how I'm gonna approach this yet because it's it's a very tough environment. Like I said. Um, to get rewarded for laying out the risk on some of these software reports. Um, and trade desk options are by no means cheap. Um, I, I guess what I'll say is if it has like a big move, like maybe if it like runs up into like the 220s prior to earnings, then I might look to go the opposite way. Or if it drops maybe down into like the 190s prior to earnings, then maybe I'll look to like go the opposite way on that. But if it stays right here, I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with it. Um, I mean, there's gonna be plenty of other software reports earlier in the week before this, so I'll see how those start to, you know, I'll see how like traders start to respond to those numbers, and maybe I can make like a, a judgment call on this. You know, by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, Disney, it's a big one. Um, five points. What's priced in? Um, so. Disney will have um, earnings this coming week, and then the week after is Disney Plus launch. So um, last quarter was a big surprise miss, and the stock really hasn't been able to recover. Um, this report's going to be important from um, both a technical perspective and a momentum perspective, and expect this to be like one of like the you know, like probably like the most talked about names next week. Um, you can see technically why what I'm talking about is a huge gap underneath, um, and, and it's really trying to turn the corner. Um, momentum wise. If they can deliver and the stock can get up into like the 130s, high 130s, I mean, it's priced in five points, then that could really kind of re reignite momentum and kind of get things moving back to the upside um, into like that Disney Plus launch. So I still feel like the, like the more potential on this is from like a longer term perspective. Um, so I, I like like a longer term swing idea. Um, so maybe like, you know, selling near term premium in favor of like a longer term or, or like a, you know, maybe like, like three, four, six months out, like, um, bullish options just, you know, if they can, like I said, if they can turn the corner technically, um, fundamentally you got a few big catalysts and I mean like the stock seems to be like one of those where people want to get on board. They kind of just need like the kind of like the green light. 
So I'm definitely going to be looking at this thing, but I don't know if, like specifically whether an earnings trade is the right way to go about it. Win. Um, nine points what's priced in. Um, I haven't traded casinos in a while. Um, Rin kind of looks interesting though, right? I mean, it's right, right at the 200A, right at the top of a couple months resistance. Got some room above. Um, options are kind of expensive versus what it typically moves, but, you know, I mean, I feel like if you have like a direction in mind, they're not bad. MGM, LVS, kind of decent results. Op um, the stock movement wasn't anything spectacular. So, when, you know, it, it looks a little bit more interesting than it has recently. Uh, could be worth a shot. I'll kind of see how the week goes. Um, I mean, we'll see if Wink can kind of get a little Momo. Maybe I'll look at something in, like, the low 130s to see if it can, like, pop and get up into, the, into like, that July, those July levels. Zillow. Um... Four and a half points was priced in here. Uh, was hit very hard last quarter on earnings, and it was hit very hard after earnings. Um, really, it, it, it's bounced, but only in like the last like two weeks. Um, so this one's typically a pretty consistent mover. So you can see here, here, and then here, and then here. So pretty consistent, um, and I don't see why I can't keep that up. I mean, it's, the setup seems like it's like it it, it could see like five plus points, um, but it's priced in four and a half, so I, I feel like probably have to get the risk down. So maybe look at like spreads, like a, a strangle with like spreads or something along those lines. Um, and then last but not least, Thursday is Yelp. So 425 was priced in on Yelp. Um, this has been a tough name all year, and, and the chart just really doesn't look very compelling. I mean, I, you know, like it just it just doesn't look like it's ready to do anything. Um, there have been some big moves, though. I mean, I guess that's why I want to talk about it is because, you know, there have been quarters when it's moved five, six, ten points. Um, I just I don't have a whole lot of conviction with it. I haven't had a whole lot of success with it in the past. But you know, it's one of those names where, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if 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 you know they have a really great number or a really ugly number and was like up or down. You know, like I said, five, six, seven, eight points. I mean, it's done it in the past. It would surprise me if it did it again. I just don't have like a ton of conviction with it. And then um, Friday, actually, there's really nothing of interest. So that that's it. Um, but as you can see, um, just a, a ton of big names. And to be honest, like there were a lot that I, I didn't even talk about. Um, a lot of other like really um, typically volatile movers that I, I didn't even cover. So um, it should be a jam-packed week. Uh, a lot, a lot going on. Um, and uh, we're definitely not going to lack for news, that's for sure, all right? So um, if you like these videos or, or if you like any of the videos I do and you want more information on options to play or trade ideas, uh, please follow up with the, the link in the description of the video, all right? Uh, you'll get more information about options to play. Um, if you have any questions or, or comments, um, please reach out because, you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you all on Monday.